إياه نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه عباد الله أوصيكم ونفس الفقير الدليل بتقوى الله Dear servants of Allah, I advise myself primarily that all of you to have taqwa in Allah, to fear Allah, to put your hope in Allah, and to be conscious of Allah. And no one understand that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the guidance for, no one and nothing can misguide to that person. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses and lets to go astray, no one and nothing can bring them back to the right path. The words of Allah are the most profound words. The words of the Creator do not mimic the words of the creation. And in His words, Jalla wa Ala, He said, to us who believe, to the believing men and women, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِي وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ He said in his words, the most profound words to the believing men and women, you and I, advising and counseling us not to die upon any other state than the state of Islam, and to be upon the state of taqwa, God awareness, and to be aware of Allah. And whoever dies upon the state, they glad tidings for him and her, because they have obtained the guaranteed success in this world and in the next. And the greatest of guidance, the greatest of example, the greatest methodology is the methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam muslim and kathira. You will find no greater example in the history of humanity. You will find no greater leader. You will find no greater role model. You will find no greater human being. You will find no greater creation than Muhammad Abu al-Qasim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take by his practice, take by his etiquette, and you will succeed in every state of affair. And no one understand, my brothers, my sisters, that the worst of all matters, the most evil and destructive of all matters are the innovations, al-bid'ah, the practices and opinions that people have tried to place within this deen, the strand from nothing, with no purpose, with no evidence from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. These are called bid'ah, innovations, and they have plagued our society and our community. And the Sunnah and the Qur'an are what we hold by. Ahibbati kiram, my first address, is for all of us who celebrated Eid at work. As you know, Eid al-Fitr this year was announced and established on a Monday, which was a weekday, a working day. Perhaps many of you, many of your family members could not obtain the day off to celebrate and enjoy and glorify Allah. The first address and my first appeal is for all of us here to take this weekend as a Eid, to establish the Eid al-Fitr, if you did not already do so. And no, this is not a bid'ah, for the Eid has passed. However, it was marked on a Monday, as I said, a day which is usually a working day. And if the condition becomes tight, 
then Islam allows for more room. And from this member, the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am advising you and myself to take this weekend to celebrate if you did not celebrate or if you could not celebrate. To take time to spend with your family, to spend on them from your hard-earned money, to celebrate with your children, to rejoice with your family members. <coughs> this is imperative, critical, because as you clearly see, we live in a world, in a land of disbelief, and they take every opportunity to celebrate their celebrations. And however, we, we take our celebrations for granted. So the fathers and the brothers and the mothers that sit before me, ensure that this weekend is a special weekend. To mark the Eid of Al-Fitr that passed on Monday, if you have not done so already, it is not too late to celebrate, Alhamdulillah. Now, two things occur immediately after the blessed month of Ramadan. And they've already occurred by what I, what I have witnessed. Two things will occur immediately after the month of Ramadan. The first is ever so dangerous. It is the most dangerous reality. When the shayateen are relinquished and they were freed, upon the end, the conclusion of Ramadan, they come out with a vengeance. They come out to find Abdullah wa Umar wa Sumayya wa Ruqayya upon the obedience of Allah. They come out and they realize <coughs> that the servants of Allah have been upholding the commands of Allah. So they come out with a vengeance to pull you and push you astray from the righteous path. And what happens when Iyadu Billah is that they fill your mind and your heart with a sense of contentment, a false contentment. The shaytan will whisper to your nafs. He will say, look at you, mashallah. You have established an entire month of fasting, an entire month of ta'ah, an entire month of qiyam, an entire month of restraint. Let go of that. You deserve it. You've done so well. You've come so far. It's okay if you slip now. And the nafs, a nafs, it, it, it desires this. It desires this praise. And it becomes arrogant and ignorant. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَضَتُ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ Do not be as the woman who spends so much time and effort and care weaving and knitting a finely woven garment only to tear it string by string to pull it all apart and ruin it. For this entire month that has passed, Abdullah has lowered his gaze. He's held himself. Ruqayya has abstained from social media and all the trash that is within it. Umar has ensured that he does not miss salawat. Sumayya has ensured that she is upon the guidance. And then the shaitan comes to congratulate you, to elevate your status and give you a false sense of contentment so you fall back down the pit of sin. So do not be like that woman who has established such a finely woven garment through so much effort, so much care, so much detail, only to tear it all to bits. This is what you're gonna do if you fall back into the same sins. You will tear the fine fabric of the Islamic etiquette, of establishing the bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second, which is as equally as dangerous as the first, 
is that you will feel a sense of weakness, a sense of tranquility in relaxed state to the point where you start fading and easing off of the ibadat. And we are all victims to this. Because Ramadan is a month unlike any other. It is a consistent month of ibadah. When after it, the ibadahs, the acts of worship are far few in between. SubhanAllah, but it does not have to be like that. You don't have to stop fasting entirely. You may fast the six days of Shawwal. You may fast Mondays and Thursdays. You may fast the three days of Ayyam al -Bayl. These are all merited and all practiced within the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You do not need to stop attending the Masajid. Wallahi my Allah. The other day I came for a Salat and the room was half empty. And I looked around and I wondered, where are all of you? During the month of Ramadan, Taraweeh was packed to the rim. This entire prayer hall, the extension, the gymnasium, packed to the brim. Where are we during the regular days? And Taraweeh, as you all know, is a sunnah. When the five daily prayers are established in the masajid of Allah, where are we? Make it a priority to at least come once a day. I know you work, I know perhaps you live abroad, you have responsibilities. One salah a day. Isha is established late, Maghrib is established late, you can make that salah. It is a wajib. If you have nothing to do, it is a wajib to attend the masajid. We started to slack off right away. Even the dua that you used to make during Ramadan, you put that on mute, you put that on silence. The month is over, the month of ijabah is over, khalas, no more dua. Keep calling upon Allah. Answer the call of Allah to be answered. وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها وأرضاها Our Blessed Mother, she said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said أحب الأعمال إلى الله أدومها وإن قد The most beloved deeds to Allah The most favored deeds to Allah are the deeds which are consistent even if they are not the greatest deeds even if they are simple deeds of goodness Allah loves consistency, and the key to success is consistency. Do not be just sporadic, like a can of pop, you just fizz once and you're done. Be consistent in your worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jalla says in His profound words, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ He says to us, the believing men and women, to answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fulfill your oath and your promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is not placed within a timeline, within a month frame. You must reply and respond to Allah 12 months out of the year, 365 days out of the year. أقول ما تسمعون فاستغفروا الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم.